Thank you very much. And I was pretty excited to be called a quarterback since I never played football because I was too damn short. When I was a junior in high school, I was only five foot three. So that was a real complex because all the girls were taller than me, so that was a little problem. <clears throat> so I was on the debate team. I had a, I had a, a good mouth. Um, but anyway, um, California has come back. We are coming back. Uh, we're doing lots of important stuff, and uh, not the least because uh, of the leadership of Senator Padillo and others. I think we got probably the biggest Latino delegation ever in California, and I don't know about the rest of the country. We're bigger than Texas, I hope? Almost whatever, or close. But anyway, <laughs> friendly competition. Um, and I was very proud to sign the DREAM Act. And then, as soon as I signed, <clears throat> I had to sign the DREAM Act twice. The first one was resident tuition for undocumented students. And the second was eligibility for scholarships for undocumented students. And then, because we're still waiting for that, whatever they call that, Congress, Washington group of people, um, well, I signed a bill to let an undocumented law school graduate who passed the state bar to become a lawyer, legalized in California. So I think that's pretty good. You can practice law in California, even if the law doesn't recognize that you ought to be voting in California. So it's, well, but you know what? If we keep doing stuff like that all across the country, Congress will get the message. That's what's really important. But we're not waiting. <clears throat> That's why I signed the driver's license bill. And by the way, it was only 10 years ago that over 60% of the people were against giving undocumented Californians a driver's license. That's flipped around. And that's flipped around for one big reason, not politicians. It's really the, the, the people, the participation, the sheer uh, power of the Latino community as it is felt in the towns and cities and counties up and down the state. So that's the tide that is turning the, the political feelings and philosophy of state government. By the way, there's one more bill, and that is um, another bill I was able to sign. The legislature actually, I don't invent most of these things. It's all done by the legislature. And then when I sign it, everybody thinks I did it. That's why the legislators always get jealous of the governor, because he gets all the credit and does almost none of the work. Uh, but anyway, you gotta take, take the good and the bad. Anyway, there was another bill that said that if a if you have an organizing drive, a group of employees want to organize uh, a, a union, and the employer uh, calls up the immigration service to defeat that effort, that we have an anti-retaliation law that now says you have to be reinstated, and we make that practice illegal. So you give undocumented the right to organize. And then I do want to say something about the, the uh, school funding formula that the legislature passed two years ago. Very important. I think it's the first time that uh, money is being spent not equally. There used to be the cry, very important, equal spending for all school districts. And a lot of places haven't even done that yet. Not even close. But in California, we have unequal spending based on needs like uh, those families, that speak a language other than English at home, they get a special consideration and the school district gets more money based on the number of non-English speaking families that have their children in our schools by the billions. And that's only because it's not really justice to treat unequals equally. You have to do more to be able to create that opportunity and that pathway uh, for those families that are not uh, having the same skill of speaking English uh, as others. So anyway, we've done that in California out of six million students, two million uh, are designated English language learners and that means extra money for that school, as well as for low income families. And that's about half the students in California. It's pretty amazing. I don't know what the affluent families are doing. They don't, they're not producing or something because <laughs> The schools, half the kids in the schools are from low-income families. So, you know, what can I say? Uh, there it is. Uh, 
But we understand that, and we're doing some, something about it. And then, of course, water. Look, these are all, there are a lot of individual issues. What's important is that we, uh, that the power you represent is, is growing. And it's growing uh, in really important ways. And as someone said, it, our connection to Mexico was so close, it wasn't all that long ago. 1769, Carlos III said, Occupy San Diego. You didn't know California started with the Occupy movement. <laughs> it was. Carlos III said, Occupy San Diego and Occupy Monterey. And then Gaspar uh, de Portola came up here with Father Serra, 1769. That was the Spanish. The Mexicans threw out the Spanish around 18, what was it, 1815. And then, of course, the gringos threw out the Mexicans in 1846 or 1848. But the point is, you never, you never uh, keep control forever. There's always new waves coming. So you got to stay ahead of the wave. That's what we call brown power. All right? But anyway, uh, so. Uh, and I'm going to Mexico next month because we want to forge an agreement. You know, I ran for president three times, didn't quite make it. Uh, I won five primaries twice. Unfortunately, you have to win maybe 25 primaries. But California is like a nation state. We have 38 million people, 40% uh, of Latino uh, descent, and we can form our own agreements. So we're forming agreements with Mexico and China British Columbia on trade, on joint research, uh, on scholarships, and climate change. So, yeah, there's a border, but there's something bigger, and that is the human family. And when we focus on the Western Hemisphere, and we focus on Baja California and Alta California, we know that we are one greater family that is working together, and that's my philosophy in Alta California, and together I think we're going to have a better a better state. And when I was governor the last time, by the way, I was signed the bilingual education bill. That's a long time ago. I also called for a common market between Mexico, Cali uh, Mex not California, the United States. I sometimes forget. Um, Mexico, <laughs> United States, and Canada. And we're going to get to that eventually because, you know, this is where it is and we're all together in some big sense. So anyway, thank you very much. I think this is great. You're getting more powerful all the time. And stick to it. You know, once you get elected, don't get unelected. I can tell you, I've been in power and I've been out of power. It's better to be in than to be out. Thank you very much.